Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Upper again today. My name is Jim Merle, and on one of the previous programs, I don't know when you might have seen it, but I recorded it about three days ago. We were talking a little bit about the heart catheterization slash biopsy process that often takes place post heart transplant. Now the catheterization side of it or the angiogram, typically they're looking for blockages and or pressures of the heart just to make sure everything pulmonary wise and you know blood wise is functioning correctly and obviously the biopsy is there uh, to try to detect uh, rejection. So they're going to pull two, three, four, depending on what the physician sees when he's in there, uh, samples or pieces of the heart out and they're going to test that to see if you're in rejection. That is by far the most accurate procedure that can be used to really get a good idea and an understanding of what the heart is doing and what sort of risk you may have as far as rejection goes. But with that being said, oftentimes, particularly when we face our first one, two, three, four, or 20 uh, heart biopsies slash angiograms post-transplant, it can be a rather traumatic procedure. Now, prior to transplant, the only heart catheterizations I had ever been through, basically the ones that go through the groin. They would go on the left or the right, uh, depending on what side of the heart they were trying to look on, they would go into the groin, they would take their pictures, take their looks, and many times back then, pre-transplant, I was actually pretty much knocked out, if not altogether asleep, during that procedure. So I kind of never had to face that awake. And then after transplant, typically when they're going just for the right heart cath, again, to take the biopsies and such, they would oftentimes go through my neck. And that was a little bit more traumatic because I was only given kind of a, a local anesthetic. I was not given any type of general anesthesia. And here I'm laying on that slab, nervously watching the monitors and what they're seeing off to the right, listening to the conversation, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it was kind of a traumatic experience for me. So I started doing some digging, some research, trying to determine how, if there was a way to make those procedures a little bit easier, if I could do that. Now, with that being said, when I mentioned that they oftentimes and most times than not went through my neck, I realized there are other options. They can go through the groin. They actually do from time to time. Again, depending on whether or not they're doing a right or a left or a right and left cath or not. Uh, they can even do that radially or through the wrist, which I don't like those. Uh, I tend to refuse those because for me, that causes a lot of bruising and bleeding and such. You can get out of the cath lab and get home a little quicker. Generally, you can just walk right out. But again, if I've got an arm that's useless for two weeks after the fact because of bruising or pain, I don't want to go there. And so I typically would select and choose again for them to go through the neck, but that can be nerve wracking. So what do I do and what am I suggesting you do to make those procedures just a little bit easier? Number one, first and foremost, always go into those procedures as well hydrated as you possibly can. That means drink, drink, drink. That's what you need to do going in the procedure. Now, they're more than likely going to put you as NPO or no food, no water for anywhere from six to 12 hours prior to the procedure. But leading up to that, my cutoff time is usually midnight the night before. Leading up to that, the day before, maybe two days before, I stay as hydrated as I possibly can. Now, you may be in some kind of fluid restriction when that's near about impossible, but if you're not, Drink, drink, drink. Again, much water. Drink a little bit of Gatorade or other things that might increase that hydration level. What that's going to do for you is when you go in for that procedure, and this applies really if you're just having blood drawn, maybe an IV line accessed, or, or even the cath procedures, going into that hydrated, make sure that those veins, those vessels, whatever they're trying to access is very well dilated. If you are dehydrated by the opposite of that, those things are really going to draw in, they're going to constrict, and it makes access more difficult. It can make it impossible in some cases and can make it much more uncomfortable to access those things because of course if you're laying there for longer and in the side here you're hearing that they're having problems that can increase your anxiety so I would say go in very well hydrated particularly if you can drink up to that last cutoff minute and make sure you're hydrated keep those vessels and veins dilated and it'll do better and it'll be a lot easier in addition to that number two I suggest that even though most of the time those procedures are simple local anesthesia, meaning you just receive some numbing medicine at the site, 
I would ask at least, it's worth asking, if they can give you something to kind of calm your nerves. Something like a Versed, if you're not allergic to that or don't have problems with that. Ask for something like that going in the procedure. Just kind of help calm your nerves. Now, I'm not a nervous person. I, I'm not really worried about the procedure. I've never had a panic attack related to the procedure or anything. But even still, when you're laying there on that slab like I've been before, anywhere from 45 minutes, as long as two hours even, uh, wide awake and aware, Sometimes you just need something to help you to stay still. And so I ask for that verse ad. They'll generally do that for me. And again, I'm not receiving or not feeling pain because of the local, but I'm able to just kind of relax. And, you know, sometimes the cat lab can be cold, it can be hot. Again, watching the monitors, listening to the conversation. I just need a distraction and that often helps me. Now, some transplant centers won't do that for you, but mine does. Uh, they look at it, you know, as say, hey, if it's gonna make it easier for them to get through the procedure and me as well, they'll do it. And so, you, but you always have to ask. If you don't ask, you don't receive in this case more times than not. So I do, I go in and I just ask them up front, hey, can you give me something to calm my nerves to make it easier? And again, that will, for me at least helps an awful lot. They'll generally administer that about 20 minutes before the procedure so it's kind of kicked in pretty well and then get me in for the procedure and I think they may extend that a little bit, add a little bit more if needed depending on how long it lasts. But that helps me a tremendous amount. So that's my major two tips I give you going in for those procedures. Number one, be hydrated. Number two, uh, ask for something to calm those nerves. It just makes laying there a lot easier, a lot more comfortable and that way you can be still and be a, be a little good girl or boy for them while they're doing this. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that this, this helped you some way. Uh, I would beg of you to comment below. Let me know what types of tips and advice you give as far as dealing with these procedures. How do you handle them? What are some things that you could suggest that could be done to make these a little bit easier? Because, hey, we want the easiest road we can find going through this process. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, as always, Stay stronger, my friend.